Conversation hearts have long been one of the most famous symbols of Valentine's Day. I enjoy the bright pastel colors and the often amusing messages they have printed on them. In a way, I think they can also serve as a reminder of our own hearts. What messages are we printing on them? Hi, and welcome to another Salt Light Studio devotional. This time, I decided to try out an audio devotional. I'm currently 34 weeks pregnant with our sweet baby boy, and recording and editing videos has gotten a bit more challenging these days, haha. I meant to put out devotionals for Thanksgiving and Christmas. At least I have one in time for Valentine's Day. Kind of. But I'm so happy to be sharing with you some encouragement that the Lord has laid on my heart during this season of All Things Heart. One of the first things you get to experience when expecting a baby is to hear their heartbeat. I can still recall the amazed look that Brent and I shared as we heard our Ralphie's heartbeat for the first time. A rhythmic whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. So miraculous. Isn't it cool to think there's something like that in you that moves on its own and powers your entire body? It had to get its initial movement from some power source, right? To me, that's one of the proofs of God's design. He put the beat in each one of our hearts. The Bible has a lot to say about hearts. One of the words used for heart in the Bible is the Greek word cardia. Sounds kind of familiar, doesn't it? Like cardio exercise or cardiogram. We can see why they chose that prefix in the medical world. In the Bible, the cardia refers to the affective center of our being and the desire producer that makes us tick. Thanks to Strong's Concordance for that definition. The affective center means the emotional or feelings-based part of us. This must be where our deepest desires originate from, the ones that make us tick. Maybe that's why the heart is also referred to as the ticker. Anyway, it's clear that our hearts are at the very deepest part of who we are. Our hearts remember. They've felt the deepest hurts. They hide the deepest joys. They get broken. They often need healing, and they certainly need keeping, as in caring for, loving, and protecting. Jesus wants so much to do that for us. In John 14, 1, he says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. Philippians 4, 6, and 7 says, Be careful for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Psalm 27, 14 says, Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. So Jesus is interested in strengthening our hearts, keeping them in peace, and freeing them from trouble. Amazing, isn't it? But sometimes, like those little conversation hearts, our hearts can have messages written on them that seem to be permanently stained. Messages etched by sin, hurt, doubt, and discouragement. From listening to voices other than God's. Messages like, not enough, or unworthy of love, or too broken to fix. Maybe your heart sometimes sends you a message similar to the candy one chosen by Charlie Brown on the Valentine's Day special. Forget it, kid. Once these heart messages have been written down and memorized by us for so long, they can be hard to erase. I don't know about you, but I'd like some new messages to be written on my heart to replace some of the old. Consider with me this passage from Proverbs 3, verses 3-6. through Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Mercy and truth. Yeah, I'd like both of those to be written on the table of my heart, chiseled in so they can't be erased. The mercy and truth of Jesus upon my life. Why do I so often trade that reality for the false and flesh-driven messages that want to crowd my heart? Messages like trust in yourself, your feelings, your knowledge, your abilities, instead of trust in the Lord. 
But the Lord asked me to trust in Him with all my heart, instead of leaning on my own understanding. That's my dad's favorite verse, and I can see why. It is such a reassurance to know that God doesn't ask me to trust my own flawed understanding. He just asked me to trust Him and to love Him with all my heart, because that's where all of our hearts truly belong, with Him. Sometimes it can feel hard to trust in the Lord with all our hearts. When we listen to those false messages whispered by our flesh, or the devil, or the world, messages that make us suspicious of God, does He truly have our best interests at heart? Well, yes, of course. But then, why did this bad thing happen? Or why do we feel so tired, or afraid, or depressed? And how could he love us when he knows the depths of our sin? Well, he does. And the more we seek him over the wrong messages, the more we pray to him and listen to him and immerse ourselves in the fellowship of his spirit and of his church and of his word, the deeper his mercy and truth will be written upon our hearts. I'll leave you with one last story on the subject of hearts. Have you heard that song, Tell Your Heart to Beat Again? Maybe you've heard the version by Danny Gokey or Phillips Craig and Dean. Well, one of the writers of that song is Randy Phillips, and he got the idea for it after he heard the story of a woman who had open heart surgery. Her pastor was there in the room as it was done, and he watched as the surgeon removed her heart, repaired it, and went to put it back in. The problem was it wouldn't start beating again. So the surgeon massaged the heart and tried other things, but it just wouldn't restart. So he leaned over to the unconscious patient and told her, Miss Johnson, this is your surgeon. The surgery went perfectly. Your heart has been repaired. Now tell your heart to beat again. And miraculously, her heart started beating. The cool metaphor that this song highlights is that If we've believed in Jesus as our Savior, He has already repaired our heart. It's an ongoing process of healing, but He is always there with us, giving us everything we need. It's just sometimes our hearts seem to be stuck in a big freeze of their own, trapped by lies and fears and painful experiences of the past. It's these times when we need to have a conversation with our own hearts to remind them that we do have such a loving God. Because of this, we can say to our frozen hearts, beat again. Thank you all so much for listening. It's been a pleasure sharing this with you, and I pray the Holy Spirit uses it to encourage your heart. Also, I put together a playlist of songs that inspired this devotional and that go along with the theme of hearts and Valentine's Day. I will put the link to that in the video description if you'd like some uplifting music to listen to. Again, thank you all so much for tuning in. Much love to you all, and I pray you have a very blessed day.